America's population. Um, I think we justify not doing anything by pointing blame at them. I hear all the time, well, they chose it. They're homeless by choice. And even if people don't go right there, they still like to say, well, there must have been something they did. I mean, look, they're drug addicted. That's something they did. And I think that we tend to all come from a place of privilege, and especially when one hasn't experienced poverty, it's really easy to blame someone for their lot in life. We take care of abandoned animals because it's not their fault, they're innocent. We don't look at the population like that. And, and this is you know, something that we've been really doing historically. You know, if, if you read the newspaper from the 1930s, we called them Opies back then, but it was the exact same dehumanization to a population that we blame for their circumstance. And I think that the only way through that is really just to start seeing homeless people as people. You know, uh, Whoville had a good little phrase that said that for the grace of God was you, Bill. And I think that that's very important to realize that no matter how well off we may be, um, we're all, in a sense, one tragedy away from homelessness. And as soon as we stop seeing them as the other, I think that we'll start to, you know, what I say is if the South Hills burned down tomorrow and 3,000 people ended up homeless, we'd do something immediately, immediately. And it's only because we blame this population for their own problems that the same action. I think the best thing that the business community can do is to overall support an atmosphere that does not criminalize. Um, when I go downtown, to me, the two biggest issues are issues that have everybody. No benches and nowhere to go to the bathroom. And these two issues uh, are both because of the homeless community. You know, we took the benches away, thinking if we took the benches away, all the people would disappear. And we took the bathrooms away when we closed the downtown mall. And the main reason I hear that we don't want to install bathrooms is because we don't want them vandalized by homeless folks. However, everybody needs to sit and everybody needs to go to the bathroom. And not having these two things really causes a backlash among the community. I hear businesses constantly going on about people sitting in front of our building and asking to use our bathroom. And the swarms of people you find on corners such as uh, Broadway and Olive, for example, I think that if they had somewhere to sit, somewhere to be, somewhere to go, uh, this would not be an issue. You know, public sanitation benefits everyone. By not having benches downtown, the businesses are kicking themselves in the foot because it keeps parents from ch with children from coming downtown. It keeps the elderly from coming downtown. Not having bathrooms keeps people with medical issues from coming downtown. So, you know, we, we end up driving away a large percentage of the population because of our fear of one segment of the population. And I would also um, say to businesses that, you know, certain decriminalization, certain criminalization policies, such as the you no know, trespassing signs all over town, which allow police to arrest people whenever they want to from being there, um, these are also, you know, these these policies cause a backlash amongst the community. You know, if you treat people like animals, how do you expect them to act? If we don't treat people with respect and dignity, they're not going to treat you back with respect. All I hear downtown from the businesses is, these homeless people don't respect us. And all I can say is, yeah, you don't respect them either. It doesn't mean I condone their behavior, but I refuse to condemn it because respect is a two-way street. And once we start treating everyone like human beings who have the right to sit and go to the bathroom, I think it'll be a much more livable community. Really, a matter of reappropriating current resources as opposed to raising more money. Uh, the criminalization of homelessness costs this city a small fortune, and it's the kind of money that, frankly, your city government doesn't really want you to know about. Uh, Mayor Piercy speaks of a woman called Million Dollar Mona. <clears throat> I can tell you that Million Dollar Mona isn't the only one. There's about a dozen frequent flyers in this town who cost the city upwards of several hundred thousand dollars to deal with. Um, our municipal court alone is a $4 million a year uh, hole in our funds. Um, Boulder, Colorado recently renovated an old prison and turned it into a homeless shelter, and they found that they were formerly spending $75,000 a year per homeless person, and by sheltering them instead of criminalizing them, they got that down to about $25,000. Um, just by example, you know, and only in the past week alone, 36 prohibited camping tickets have been written at just the Broadway and Hilliard location. If those folks choose to take those to trial, each citation will cost the city at least $1,000 in terms of court time, lawyer time, um, bureaucrats. So that's $36,000 that the city is going to spend criminalizing people for sleeping. If we reappropriated that $36,000 alone, that would not be enough to spend on porta potties, 
for small camps all over the city to give people a place to legally sleep. Criminalizing the problem costs us a fortune. I'm in favor of, you know, what I call like luxury taxes that don't necessarily affect the low income folks. Um, Ashland, Oregon, for example, has a 5% restaurant tax that brings in between two and three million dollars worth of revenue a year for the city of Ashland. That I believe, don't quote me, I believe they use on social services. When they passed that tax, the uh, restaurant owners threw a fit. Absolutely not. People will not eat in our restaurants if they have to pay 5% tax. And all I can say is every time I'm in Ashland, I'm waiting for a table. Um, I would also love to see an additional, you know, the county already has a transient room tax on hotel rooms, but I'd love to see an additional tax that specifically uh, hits higher level hotel rooms, like the kind that our uh, University of Oregon Ducks fans rent. Um, I think that they take a whole lot of their money from city services and maybe should be putting something back. That's the solution you don't want. Um, Portland and LA have both decriminalized sleeping on sidewalks, both as a result of court settlements over the same Ninth Circuit decision that I was referencing before. We don't think that's the right answer. Uh, we spent four years revitalizing downtown, having a federal judge say people can sleep on the sidewalks between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. I do not see help at the downtown floor. One of the reasons that we would love um, designated places to sleep is that this does not end up in federal court and we do not end up with that kind of decision. I'd rather the community choose what happens and the federal court decide for us. So no, I, I would support uh, such a you know, decriminalization outside of the downtown perhaps and the outer city limits, but I don't think sleeping on sidewalks is the answer.